Please be seated, and I'd like to invite the children to please come forward. Be socially distant. All right. So, um, you guys, I need you to, to look, and right beside you, there are some red bags. So I want you to see if, you, if your family, there's one for each of your families. Okay, and is that my buddy Gus? Gus, I got, got one for you too. Grab the bag for your family. There's going to be one that says Merson. There's going to be one that says Ingley and McWhorter. You're, you're with Gus? Okay, good. All right, so now look inside the bag. Natalie, did you get yours? Okay. Yeah, just don't worry about the ribbon. Just let me, let me borrow this from you for a second. Inside the bag, you remember how back in Lent we had the cube? We got a cube that Miss Lisa found for us uh, for, for Christmas as well. And as you look at the cube, you see there are different symbols, different uh, kind of drawings or silhouettes really of, of different scenes from the scriptures. And inside your bag is also a little booklet that explains what they all mean. So your job is to take these home with you and then you're going to go over them and you're going to check them out. And for any of the families that aren't here today, uh, you're welcome to come by and get them to the office or get them from the office or we'll get them to you, whatever we need to do, okay? So I'm not going to tell you about any more about the cube until we get to Christmas Eve. What I am going to tell you is you've got a treat in store for you today. Do you like treats? I mean, you really like treats? Yeah. I mean, our dog, if I say the word treat, she just starts to get all excited. Do you get all excited with the word treat? Yeah. Okay, well, here's your treat for today is that Deacon John is going to do the children's sermon. Uh. <laughs> Not the treat you're expecting, huh? <laughs> you guys are giving me a complex. <laughs> All right, let me ask you something. What happens this week? Christmas. Christmas. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. Have you thought about what you might get for Christmas? Yeah. Did you make a list and, and all those things? Do you... Do you think you're going to get it? You think you're going to get the, the... Yeah? Can't wait, right? Can't wait. Yeah. Let me tell you about, an, about another time. This, time. this time happened a couple thousand years ago. Did you hear Father Tim just read the gospel? And he talked about when Gabriel visited Mary, Jesus' mom. And the, and the angel told her that she had a surprise coming too. The only thing was, she had no idea how it was going to come to be or at the end what it was going to be like. And so she had to trust that God wanted the best for her. And he had a plan for her as long as she was willing to surrender to him. And then he worked out the saving of the whole world, right? Yeah, we know that, right? On Christmas. And so what I want you to remember this morning, okay, is that God has a plan for you too. And as we grow older, okay, we can't even imagine, you know, like this Christmas, when you can't, can't wait because you don't really know what it's going to be like that morning, right? Okay? That's the same thing that God has for us. When we give our lives to God, there's no telling what it's going to feel like, but it would be a great, great adventure. Okay? Now pray with me. Thank you, Bradley. Father God, 
Thank you for loving us. Father God, thank you that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus into the world so that he could save us. And thank you for his mom, Mary, that she trusted in God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, away you go. <laughs> I speak to you this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you have had surgery? where they administered anesthesia. Yeah, a lot of us, right? Do you remember when they prepared you and all that anxiety that was building up as you're getting ready, you know? And even sometimes they give you a pill to calm you down a little bit. How about this? Here's one I like. You ever watch, you got the IV in your arm, anesthesiologist comes in, and he's got the syringe, and he's going to put it in the IV. Do you ever watch them do that and think about how long is it going to be, right? They tell you to count backwards sometimes and all those kinds of things, but you never, you never get there, right? <laughs> how about when you go and you sign the release papers? You sign the paper saying that in case this happens, this will be, and, and how about, um, I know that I'm taking this risk when, when I go to surgery. And then the thoughts, will the surgery be successful? What happens if I don't wake up? What will it feel like? And, and all that kind of stuff. How about when you load a loved one in the ambulance? Have you ever done that? This summer, I had that opportunity. I had to call 911 because Laura was having heart trouble. Ambulance arrived, they checked her over, and they said that she was stable, but we needed to go to Orlando, or we needed to go to the hospital. Her hospital was in Orlando at Advent Hospital. So they put her on the gurney, cart, whatever the word is and loaded her in the back of the ambulance, and then they said this to me. You're welcome to fall along behind us, but if something starts happening in here, we're going to turn on the lights and the, and the sirens. Don't try to keep up. Well, we got to Haines City, and the lights came on. I tried, <laughs> but it's not possible. They can turn and get through traffic in a way that. So here I am, watching her disappear in front of me, not knowing what was going to happen, not knowing where we were. Many, many, many things ran through my mind. This year has taught us all so many things about ourselves and each other, hasn't it? We've discovered that when things get started, the control has left us. Sometimes we choose something, sometimes we don't, but once it starts, we turn it over and away it goes. And then we also learned this year, all those things that we thought we had control of, <laughs> we never really did. Our government closed businesses. I mean, Who'd have ever thought the government had that kind of power that they could close our businesses? And then in some states, the government closed churches, right? And, and then, you know, in our diocese, and, and the fact is that we have limited capacity here. We're wearing masks, all those things. And then I'll bet you that we've each either wondered whether we've had COVID or if or if we get it, what will it be like? And some of us have had it. 
And then we start to think about the normal. The normal, the new normal, be the old normal, and, and, and here we go, right? I mean, will we ever have the old normal back, or is it a new normal forever? Most of us have prayed and prayed that they would get a vaccine. And most recently, as we all know, there's a vaccine. And they're in the process of rolling out and trying to immunize America, but also the world. We know that the, that the front line people, doctors and nurses and those people have gotten or getting or are getting their immunization. And we know that we're, they're working through nursing homes and elderly and those that are certainly uh, at most risk. Now that we have a vaccine, we have a new dilemma, though. To take the shot or not. And you hear lots of people talking about that, don't you? New numbers say up to 40% of our population aren't going to get the shot. And there's no plans really for mandatory vaccinations anyway. And I'm sure people have lots of different reasons for not getting the shot, but some that I hear is, how do I know it's safe? Didn't they come up with this pretty quick? They haven't had enough time to properly see where this goes. Can I trust the government? And then the one, I am not going to intentionally allow someone to inject something in my arm that I don't really know what it is. I'm not going to give up that control because once it goes in, it's in, right? It started. Whatever it's going to be, it started. Control and anticipation. That's what I talked to the kids about, anticipation, but control. And I think that every single one of our decisions, we think about control and anticipation. Because we want to know what the results are going to be once we start. Once we turn over control, we cannot turn back anymore. And then, I tease Laura all the time, when she's struggling to make a decision about something, it's all about, what are the other options, <laughs> right? What if, I, what if there was something better, <laughs> a better choice? So let me ask you this. Can you imagine what Mary might have felt when she was visited that day by the angel Gabriel. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. They said in the scripture that she was perplexed. Understatement, I think. Mm -hmm. And then for us, there's more, much more. The angel continues, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there be no end. Holy cow. And then Mary, I mean, how? Why? How? I'm a virgin. How can it possibly be? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And therefore the child will be born holy. Be the Son of God. Don't you imagine that she would wonder. How? The Holy Spirit? What, will it, what, what could it possibly be like? And then, to top that off. Your relative Elizabeth has a son. Or is, has conceived a son. And she's six months pregnant. And she was old and barren her whole life. How can this be? Nothing is impossible for God. And Mary said, with this, with this much information, she said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. She gave herself over. It makes me think, wow, <laughs> faith and trust, don't know that I have it, that depth, giving up control, hang on, we're going for an amazing journey. 
I'll bet you if we were all really honest, isn't there one, at least one area of your life that you love to control? Yeah, probably a lot more. And some of us are confused even in the things that are going on in our, in our lives. Probably asking, why is this happening? I never thought I would experience this. Lord, I can't handle this. And I know Mary had to have been in that situation. We read in verse 29 that Mary was perplexed. How about agitated, confused, disturbed? We love to control things, every one of us. Hmm. Our kids. How they dress. Who they hang out with, wherever they go to college, who they will marry if we could, and with our spouses. Do you know there's a right and a wrong way to load the dishwasher? <laughs> <laughs> social media. We have the power with social media to control what people think about us and what they know about us. We can filter it. We can change it. We can edit it. We can make ourselves look like something we're really not. We can make people believe. Okay? We want control of all that. And then here's the, here's the thing. The more we want control, the more we fear losing control. Right? We want control, we fear. And then the more we fear losing control, the more we need <laughs> To seek it. And so it just goes around and around and around and around. Mary, no doubt, was confused. But she had a kind of faith. A kind of faith to let go. She had no way of knowing where this was going to go. She had no way of knowing what, what it would be like when the Holy Spirit came. But she showed us faith. And then on the other side of our faith... Then, if we have that faith, then, then, and only then, we will experience the faithfulness of God. The God who is always there with us. Here's the idea we don't always, we don't always have the power to control. But, we do have the power to surrender. And turn it over. When we surrender to God, there's no telling where the journey and what the journey will look like or where it will go. But I do know this, it will take us all the way to our salvation. And then get ready for a great ride. Mary didn't know the end of the story. She didn't know that three, dec three decades later, her firstborn son would be on the cross. She didn't know that he would die. And then God would raise him. She didn't know that all the angels would sing and he'd ascend to heaven and he'd be seated at the right hand of God the Father. There was no way she could know all that. In the same way, none of us know what's going to happen in our particular situation, either do we? We try to control it. Mary had a choice to make that day. I'll bet you she had dreams. I'll bet you when she was hanging out with the other girls, they talked about their dreams. They talked about the man they would marry because it was already determined, right? And then she had to make a choice that day. She had to choose between her plans and God's destiny for her. She had to choose to give up her control, turn it over to God's calling. The thing that I love about Mary is this, even though she didn't understand the plan, she trusted that God had a purpose for her. That's an example for us. I call it faithful obedience. And so, you know, obedience first, faith second, I don't know, but faithful obedience. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus told his disciples this, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give for the return of his soul? 
Jesus is simply telling us this. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if it's instead, if you give up your life, if you surrender it to me, you will find life. Surrendering does mean to give up control. And here's the thing. In surrendering to Jesus, we gain something that no matter how hard we work at it, no matter how hard we try, we can never accomplish it on our own. We gain our salvation. Thousands of years ago, God made a promise to send a Savior into the world. And we know from the book of Isaiah, one, that, one of the Old Testament lessons that we, would, we hear in a different cycle. In chapter 9, we hear the promise. This was a dark time in the, in the, in the history of the people of Israel. Isaiah said, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them, light has shined. For to us, a child is born. To us, a, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and his kingdom to establish it, to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth forevermore. The zeal of the Lord will do this. God fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy through Mary. And there are many, many, many more that he's continuing to fulfill today in and through us even though God isn't going to ask us to carry the light of the world in our womb. <laughs> he is asking us to carry the light, that very light, though, in our hearts. And when we have that light in our hearts, then we can share the light of Christ in our dark world. And we'll all admit this world's kind of dark right now. Maybe like the one that Isaiah was describing in those days, he told of the hope that was to come hundreds of years before Jesus. He didn't, he didn't indicate how long the people were going to have to wait, though, did he? A lot longer than most ever imagined. And don't we all get impatient? It's hard to wait. But we were also called to wait. Uh, the apostles and the people that were with Jesus when he ascended to heaven all believed that during their life they would see his return. And here we are 2,000 years later and we're waiting. But we're called to wait and to anticipate the coming of our Lord. We're coming toward the end of the season of Advent. You see we have four candles lit and then Thursday evening, we will light the, the Christ candle, the light of Christ for Christmas. We remember his first coming. And now we wait and hope in hope and anticipation of his second coming. But while we wait, let me ask you this. What are your plans for tomorrow evening? I invite you to do something. Humor me. I'd like you to go outside just after dark, just after dusk, look to the southwestern sky, and it's not right at the horizon, it's, it'll be up a little bit, and tomorrow evening, December 21st, Saturn and, and Jupiter align. They call it a conjunction. They come in very close alignment. And many people are calling it the Bethlehem star. Yeah. Is it possible? that that was the star that the Magi followed? We know that, that the alignments of two planets is very rare, especially when they're as close as these are, because they only happened, the last time this happened was 800 years ago. And it comes to us on the darkest day of the year in, the, in our hemisphere. That's when the North Pole is tilted the farthest away from the sun. 
It's the shortest and darkest day of the year. And then that light. As I said, could this be the star that the wise men followed? Ah, I doubt it. But isn't it a great gift? Right here in Advent, right here, just before we, the day we celebrate Christmas and Christ's first coming. Isn't it a great gift? You know, and perhaps that star and the little bit of media that comes around that might draw, might draw a new believer. But for us, it can direct us and our hearts to the coming of Christ. As I said earlier, in the coming weeks or months, maybe for some of us, we'll have the opportunity to make a choice whether or not, whether or not, we're going to get our vaccine, right? Even though there's going to be lots of debate. The most important thing is this. The decision to get the shot or not isn't really going to save it here. The point is this. That shot may help us control the spread of COVID-19, but it won't save us any of us. It's saving work is temporary. With or without the vaccine, we, each and every one of us, will pass from this earth. We'll pass from our earthly lives. We will all die one day. Now, there's only one way that our death isn't the end. There's only one vaccination that'll do this. And we can only get that vaccine in one place. We receive the gift of eternal life from the one place on the day that we turn our lives over to Jesus by surrendering to him. And when we turn our lives over and we surrender to him, then when our, when our hearts are prepared, then he will visit us each day, then we'll have the opportunity to spread the light of Christ in our world. Why not make today that day?